All right, let's take a look at question 13. In question 13, um, we are going to use the graph of a trigonometric function to find the amplitude, period, and vertical shift um, uh, with, the, with the given inf information, okay? Question 13 reads, the function f of x equals a cosine bx plus c is plotted on the graph below. So we have the graph there. So the question is, what are the values of a, b, and c? All right, so we're given the function f of x is equal to a cosine bx plus c. So uh, we want to figure out what values of a, b, and c would result in the generation of this graph right here. Okay, all right, let's start with um, our formulas. There's some formulas that we need to know in order to solve this problem. All right, so here are the formulas that we want to keep in mind. The uh, formulas are to help us generate, number one, the amplitude. The amplitude of a graph distance from the peak to the valley is given by, I'm sorry, distance from the center to the max or center to the mean, not peak, peak to valley. Anyway, so the amplitude is given by the absolute value of A, all right, and then the period is given by the formula 2 pi over B. And then your vertical shift is simply the C value. All right, so this is more than enough to help us solve the problem. Let's start by determining what um, A is. All right, so we need to find what the amplitude of this graph is. So amplitude is the distance from the central position to the max or the min. Okay, so if you look at this graph, it goes between 5 and 1, right? 1 to 5. So if you find the middle point, 1, 2, 3, 4, divide 4 by 2, you see that this is the center. This line divides the graph into identical halves, all right? So that's the, uh, that's the central point right there. So that's your new x-axis. You can call that x nu after the shift, x nu. And then what's your y-axis going to be? Um, if you look at this cosine function, we know what the cosine functions look like. So uh, we can easily see that the x, the new y-axis is the same thing as the old one. So there is no change. There is no um, <coughs> horizontal shift, just a vertical shift. Okay, so hopefully you can see the shift right here. Let me show you what the original cosine graph looks like. The original cosine graph should look something like this. So from here, it goes like that, and then down to the bottom, okay? And then it just goes up. But what happened is that the graph got shifted. It got shifted two units up. So this new, this old origin went up one, two, actually it's three units. It went up one, two, three, and then the peak, you see this peak right here, went up one, two, three. So it got shifted up uh, by a value of three units, okay? So this is our new uh, function. The reason why we want to know where the center is is because the center helps us to determine where the um, maximum and the minimum are, okay? All right, so let me show you the max and the min. So the maximum is the a point that goes through all the peaks right there, so that's your maximum. And this is your minimum right here, bam. All right. So the distance from the center to the max or mean basically represents your amplitude. Okay. All right. So from here to here, this is your maximum. Oopsie. This is our maximum max, and this is our min. So if you want to find what the amplitude is, all you just look for is the distance between the maximum and the minimum. How was the separation? So if you count it, it's one, two. So your amplitude is going to be uh, two. So the absolute value of A is going to be two. Okay. Now, 
is a going to so basically a is going to be plus or minus 2 how do we know what a is if it's plus or minus 2 in order to figure that out we need to go back to the configuration or orientation of our cosine functions okay so um, the positive cosine function um, starts from the maximum and goes down it's just like a cup all right so this is y equals a cosine um, x but if it starts from the valley, the minimum, and goes up like an inverted cup, then this one is going to be y equals negative a cosine x. All right. So since at the x-axis it starts from the maximum and goes down, that automatically tells us that a is positive. So in this particular problem, a is going to be positive 2. You don't need to bother yourself too much about the sign of a because the only options that are presented here are both positives. All right, so we don't have to bother about the sign. We automatically know that A is 2 based on the options, but also thinking about your the orientation of your cosine graph, you can automatically determine what the sign of A is. All right, so we can eliminate 3 and 4 since they have the wrong A values. The next thing that can help us figure out the answer is the B value. All right, the B value is related to the period. Um, so the period is what? What is the period? The period is basically the distance between um, consecutive maximums or consecutive minimums. It doesn't matter. The same thing. So this is, a, um, I'm sorry, consecutive yeah, maximums or peaks. So this is one peak. This is another peak right here. So the distance from this peak to this peak, since they're next to each other, that, ladies and gentlemen, is your period. Let me switch colors here. This is our period. Alrighty, so the period in this graph, let's count it, 1, 2, 3, 4. The period is, kind of again, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 4. Alright, so the period is 4. Now, oh, quick correction, the period is not 4, the period is pi over 3. Okay in my unit so if you look at the calibration of our um, x-axis 1 2 3 4 4 tick marks is equivalent to pi over 3 all right so the period in this problem is pi over 3 all right that looks better now okay so we know what our period is pi over 3 um, so we can use that to find the B value so let's rewrite the equation that we talked about earlier the period is 2 pi over B all right so the period in this problem is pi over 3. So pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi over b. Now we're going to solve this problem for b. All righty. So to do that, we are going to multiply both sides by b. If we do that step, it's going to cancel this b out from the right side. And we will have um, b or pi over 3b equals 2 pi. To finish this off, we'll simply multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient of b. So the reciprocal of pi over 3 is 3 over pi. You can divide both sides by pi over 3 also, but that looks weird and complicated. So I'll use a simpler option, which is to multiply by the reciprocal of the coefficient, an equivalent step to dividing by that coefficient. Alrighty? So this pi cancels out with that. This 3 cancels, which is what we desire with this 3. And then we have b equals, and then on the right side, the uh, pi's cancel out, cancel, cancel. And our b value is 2 times 3, which is 6. b is 6. So we can clearly see that the answer to option question 13 is option number 1. And just for confirmation, remember we talked about the shift. This is the x old right here. All right. If you want to calculate what the um, vertical shift is, you just ask yourself how many units from the old x-axis to the new x-axis. So it's one, two, three. Bam. So it's three units up. So that automatically tells us that C is 